How great this would be to have as your backyard. And there's so much I would love to talk about. I should be making a video on some other place. I don't want to say it. At the very least, I want to play Where Are We? Where are we? This is a really bad picture. I'll have to put a better picture on top of this. Where in the hell are we? Any flags? Oh, there's a flag. I, I don't recognize the flag. Some of you may. And clearly we have palm trees. This is supposed to be somewhat of a replica, but not at the same time. They stress. But pretty much a replica. It's like a couple feet shorter of the United States Capitol. But this is a poor country. A poor communist country. And I've told you how they use communism as a cover-up to keep a tight lid on things, such as this, for example. Why the hell does this country, who is so poor, that they're still driving around vehicles from the 50s? It's like the whole country is frozen in time and has never really been prosperous in modern times. But in the past, it was clearly glorious. We see star forts all over this area. And this is El Capitol. And I suppose there's no reason we can't look into this. Let's look at what they have to say. Welcome. Okay, should I have picked up those socks before making this recording? Probably. What would Chief say? He would say, who cares, Pa? And he's right. So let us go to Cuba. This little fireplace is called the Cubic Mini. It's out of Quebec. I'll close the door and see how awesome it is. It'll get about 400 degrees. And even that little propane one over there We'll get about 250 on the top. Neither of them use any power, and I think it's a great option. You can see my stove pipe runs up there and up there. Always tricky for every different application. But anyway, I digress. El Capitola, or Capitolio, Bungholio. Sorry, Beavis and Butthead reference. I should have made this recording days ago. I was very excited and I'm hoping it'll come back to me. Something was very wrong with this narrative. And let's rediscover it together. Sorry, this stove is really loud. I don't think I've ever recorded with it before. Okay, I dampened the flu a little. So yeah, this was just a very communist narrative. Here is a cathedral in Havana, and if you've seen any of my cathedral videos, you'll know these are found all over the realm. No biggie, actually pretty ordinary, but very beautiful. This capital was commissioned by Cuban President Gerardo Machado, or Machado, I'm not sure. He was the president from 1925 to 1933. That's it, a very short time, and he commissions this building. And it was built from 1926 to 1929. Three years, great. Under the direction of a Eugene something, the son of another Eugene, and designer of many buildings, we are told. And here we can see its location on an older depiction. And look how star 40. Everything is already. Even in this old depiction. Star Ford up here. No talk of this. Who commissioned this? That was a map of Havana in 1850. 1850. Still in its infancy. And like I said, Cuba has been stuck in the 50s. Still. Trade embargoes and all sorts of nonsense that have oppressed the poor people, and yet this is a much older and sophisticated region. 
And yet, according to the narrative, we're just kind of getting started as far as this Capitol building is concerned in 1925. And ultimately, this is built in three years. Look at the weathering. It's like they never even got to clean it up from their inheritance. It looks like some building in Italy or anywhere. Three years, right off the get-go. They just stress that. This was built from 1926 to 1929. The building was built on land that was a railroad terminal and used to belong to the railway. The construction was overseen by this firm, a New York City-based engineering firm, Purdy and Henderson. So Purdy. And here's a look at the old train station. And just look at the city. Just totally built out, as far as the eye can see, and in ruins. Horse and buggy, still not even really fully improving these roads. Look at this junk down here. What is this? Dirt? Maybe a dead animal? I'm not sure. Construction was overseen by this New York company. Prior to the Cuban Revolution of 1959, the Congress was housed in the building. The Congress was abolished and kicked out, and in 1959 the building fell into disrepair. So this is like a brand new building. They used it for 30 years, and it looks like this? Used for 30 years. I don't know. The Capitol has a size of 681 by 300 feet. Although its design is compared to the United States Capitol, as we can see here, it is not a replica. It's similar to that in Washington, D.C., but a meter higher and a meter wider and a meter longer, as well as much richer in detail. There we go. So it's better and bigger in Washington, D.C. Does this make sense? In Cuba? On an island? To finish the construction, they needed more than 5,000 workers, three years, three months, and 20 days. Mm-hmm. As well as $17 million. It was the tallest building in Havana until 1950. It houses the world's third largest indoor statue. That's really interesting. I'll have to stick a photo in. Another little rabbit hole. But let's move on. In 2019, the historian of the city, Eusebio Spengler, proclaimed the end of the renovation with the unveiling of the dome. What? This is just stupid. The unveiling of the dome in 2019. So you see what I'm saying? Pure comedy. You unveiled this crusty ass dome as if we're to believe that they finished it. But again, you have to remember that Cuba has been under wraps for over 50 years, 70 years. And here, surprise, we're unveiling the renovations of the dome in 2019. What do they renovate here? They tell us the inspiration for the cupola came from the Pantheon in Paris. A mind blower that we're told was built beginning in 1758. So here's the one in Paris, the inspiration we're told for the one in Cuba, which is almost identical to the one in Washington DC. And these stupid stories, like they had to hire a firm out of New York to build the exact same thing that we see all over the realm. Does this make any sense? No. These are built by the old world. There were no individual firms and architects and contests held. No. And the dates weren't scattered from BC to present times? No. They're all the same. They're all from a similar time period. Some are in absolute ruins because the cities have been destroyed. Again, I use this site, as I've said before, not to cite as facts, but rather to mock and to show what the average person will be told and most likely accept. The royal palm trees were designed by French landscape architect Jean-Claude Forrester. 
Just over the top. In three years, the world's largest statue, indoors, and we've seen some big ones like the one in Nashville at the Pantheon. Here we're told is a picture of the construction of the dome in 1928. Again, three years this took place. So what, they threw the palm trees in before they were done? This must have been the idea of the French landscaper they imported. And here a palm tree is missing its top. Has this been accidentally cropped out to facilitate this construction photo? Here we go. Here is our construction photo. I don't know. Is the scaffolding holding up? this dome and just looking like anything anywhere looking very old and seasoned over here in cuba in 1928 here's what she looks like at night same building different story different location but in my opinion a little over the top three years and here's an aerial view i mean look at this city again we could have played where are we this doesn't seem like Cuba. Look at this. These gardens. Here again, the French landscape artist that they brought in specifically for the palm trees. There we go. He just threw some palm trees in the corner here. I mean, really not much landscaping needed. Okay, here again, some palm trees. And here the dome looks very shiny in this old picture. And look at Cuba. Look at this. Just packed a city of a million people, Havana, 1928, an old worlder. And look at the sharp corners of the coastline. Here again, a construction photo, 1929. What's going on here? Here we see a statue going up a ramp. Real crude, crude ramp. Pure wood. Here we can see some activity going on here, but Nothing that would really facilitate the building of something like this. Nothing, nothing at all. This is more of a landscaping operation. Here we go, here are the palm trees. <laughs> Honestly, they look like they were here. They really do. And I used to cut palm trees. That was one of my first little black market businesses in Arizona. I would charge $20 per palm tree to trim the dead foliage off of the bottom. And then people started doing it for $10 per tree. And I moved on to something else. So I don't know. It looks to me like they're just trying to pave out here. Make some sidewalks like we see here. They probably had to make a sidewalk out of concrete to get this statue to this wooden ramp and perhaps this steam implement was used as a winch they winched it along and maybe there's another winch up here and here the old railway leads right to this site so they're telling us that they built that in place of whatever used to be here they built their capital here and we see all the landscaping out in front so I'm not sure. It looks to me that this was the terminal hub. That makes more sense. But we'll leave it there for now. Next is a little segment called All is Lost. All is Lost, take one. All is Lost. Oh, you're a good boy. Chi Chi is a good boy. All is Lost. I say all is lost because... I have great ideas and I get distracted. Epic videos all in my mind and I get distracted and they're gone. Today Chief and I had a great hike and we found glass. And I'm gonna show you the glass that I found. And I'm jumping the gun. I should be patient, but this is the area where I found it. So what I'm noticing in these areas, all of them, I could take you to any place out here. And always on the top of what I believe is some cooked out concrete, you see rocks. Beautiful, smooth, melted down, what I think were metal bits. And this is what they look like. No rivers, we're on top of mesas here. And it was so windy, I decided to come here because I knew it was sheltered. And Chief and I could have a nice time. It's still windy. You see the wind blowing on him. Just blowing his hair 
We had a great time. And all different colors, and I have these rocks too on my land. And actually, if you cut them open, sometimes they're like gems inside. Beautiful agate, multicolored gems. But sometimes I think metal. And maybe metal mixed with glass. And anyway, today I found glass. I'm really excited. Here is kind of where the glass was. Again, you can see these rocks, a lot of reds. And Big Oil, I believe, is totally keen on what we know. Because they have an oil well up here on top of all this. I actually drove around. In one way, they destroy a lot of evidence. But in another way, they actually give me access to places I otherwise wouldn't be able to access. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. And anyway, let me show you this glass. And I've seen such things before, but never such a large deposit. And to me, it's pretty important. Many of you will remember the video where I found a brick just out in the wilderness. Same color as this mud. It just looked like mud, but I could see a little square impression and just pulled it out. And I found metal, real clinky, metallic looking pieces just littered in certain areas. And here today I found a bunch of glass. And let me show you that. So here's a piece just lodged in the mud. And here I'm gonna pull it out. There we go. Nice little wafer. And this stuff was very strong and looking exactly like you would expect glass to look if it had remelted, not in a nice form, but in a kind of crude form. Here I hold it up to the light, and I'm sitting right next to this piece right now. I've since washed it, and I have a bunch of specimens. I think I'll split the screen and show you those washed specimens on one side, although I'll do that tomorrow. But anyway, the light was good, setting in the west, and I just held it up to the light, and there you go. And it's very clear. It's not as yellow. It's actually, the sunset is creating this yellow look plus all the mud. And this baby is very strong. They were all very, very strong. Not as flaky as some pieces I've found, or like mica. It was much stronger than mica. I mean, just glass that had reformed. And look at this, look at this glass. Um, can I send a sample to someone and we can test? The purity of this glass, perhaps. And look at the shape that it's taken. Like some Lichtenberg electric current has been running through it. Super fascinating. And I, as usual, filled my pockets and have a bunch in my car right now. Here's some more chunks. And I say chunks, but not chunks. I mean, as if panes, very thick panes, had melted. And this is beautiful. Again, this area has just been rocked so hard, and I love to find these bits of preservation. There's no reason for glass to be up here, and it's not quartz, although it looks like it in the Sun City lighting here. This is interesting, something back here. It's nice to study your pictures when you get home, and I'm really glad I'm able to share this with someone. Many times in my life I found fascinating things, hung on to them for five or ten years, and then moved a few times, losing them, never sharing them with anyone. Fascinating things. And here I'm picking up a little piece, very sharp, and there we go. I was hoping I'd grab that other one up there. But here another piece, and here we can just see a vein. I was trying to show this vein it was just a flowing vein of glass. And now that I think about it, I mean, it ran down this crack going down to the left here. But now that I think about it, it's actually making more sense that it was a whole pane of glass. And I could probably follow this. In any case, I plan on going back. And here, this one is more chunk-like. Really almost looking woody in this photo, but... It's not. And I hope I follow this vein down to show you. So yeah, here I go down the vein. I think this is the piece that I brought home. Many like this. Here, another nice chunk I pull out here. Encrusted in mud, but since I've gotten home, they're all very, very clear. Here, another one. And this one I'm going to hold up into the light. You can get a feel for it. 
still really muddy and dirty. And I'm telling you, they're clear as could be. I can't wait to wash them off here. And then there was this place that I always wanted to go, but there was no access. And just recently, Big Oil has made a road, a million dollar road. When they make a road, they don't mess around. They bring in hundreds of different vehicles and make it happen within weeks. Prior to that, this was kind of somebody's backyard. There's a house to the right, and I was really, really excited. This was a first. I look forward to getting the drone out in the next few days and documenting this whole site. There is a fence, and I'm not exactly sure where I can go and where I can't. I have an oil field road next to my house, and it wasn't there when I moved in. And it sucks, but I take full advantage of every oil field road that I see. I don't know if it's allowed or not, and nor do I care. So here I park the car, and Chief and I came up this little hill. And this is actually really exciting. If we get a good snow, I'm gonna come build a jump up here. This will be a fun place for Chief and I to snowboard. And here's where we are. This is what we're dealing with. Uh, my friend Jim... He's like 80. He lives down in one of these houses. And his neighbor Wolf, or Wolfgang, a German South African who built a house out of shipping containers. One of these back here somewhere. And Wolf also put in my water line several years ago. This back here is the biggest peak in Utah, King's Peak, 13 and a half thousand. And I have no doubt now that these are ancient buildings, quite possibly the seven cities of gold, one of the cities. And this land is actually for sale or a part of it. Well, I think that's all I've got. I thank you for joining me this week. I hope your weather is better than mine. Do have a blessed day and I love you all. And I'll see you soon.